Duck hunters love to tell stories about hitting the migration just right and limiting out. However, that's not always reality. Duck hunting is hard work, and the untold story is one of missed shots, of broken gear, <laughs> and hopefully a few laughs. But if you put in the time and play your cards right, a northerly wind might bring some birds your way. Never works out how you want it to. I'm Sean Weaver, a former hunting guide, TV producer, and a guy who's just obsessed with waterfowl hunting. But limits of birds aren't what keep duck hunting alive, and that's what I want to talk about. This is Duck Lore. Washington, the evergreen state, a state known for its relentless rain and jungle-like forests that have helped Bigfoot hide for decades. That version of the state is a much different version than where I find myself on this hunt. I'm in Eastern Washington with Jason Phelps and Trevor Austin, two fellows that call Washington home and are professionals in the game call making business. The landscape here is best defined as a semi-arid or semi-desert climate. There's sand dunes and barren land, and sagebrush dominates most of the land. Hardly what folks back east would think of as duck habitat. There's some shooting already. <laughs> yeah, we need to get to a high spot to where we can see where the ducks are moving around. I know nothing about this place other than there's ducks here. Well, we're shooting, which that's usually a pretty good sign yeah. right off the bat. It's a lot different environment than I'm used to, you know? <laughs> Sage and desert instead of uh, corn and cattails. <laughs> this is the thing that is not enough people do. What's that? Go it's, scout. It's go scout. They're so focused on wanting to get to hunt. This morning, we're getting a lay of the land by foot. While being in the boat would be faster and more productive, it's an ethical play. Scouting by foot is possible here. And I don't want to screw up the morning flight for other hunters by driving around in a noisy boat. The waterfowl, do they get call shy like big game does? Or does it not? Like if they've been called due by a bunch of bad calling, it's like I'm not coming to any Yeah, absolutely, now? yep. A lot of water. <laughs> yeah, it is all around us. Man, this is a giant body of water to try to dissect, figure out where these birds want to be, you know? Yeah. Right there. That's where they want to be. <laughs> right where the shooting is. There's just little flocks kind of everywhere. Yeah, I mean, every little piece of water we look at's got a few birds on it. It's nice to see those, like that group of ducks in that pothole there. Yeah. But I think we also want to sit and watch for a while of what they do when they fly around. Yeah, where they end up and where yeah. they go. There's difference kind of in where they might be sitting right now versus when they get up and move around where they go. I think if we sit and watch for a while, we'll learn a lot about this. Plenty of shooting going on, I know that. Midday, we jump in the boat to check out the island that we thought looked good. Even though big game and duck hunting are quite different, the premise of how to scout the game is the same. If you know where they sleep, eat, and the path they take between the two, you're in the chips. Fortunately for us, ducks are a little easier to watch and follow than an elk in the timber. Oh yeah, greenheads, baby. Oh boy, look at all those ducks. Oh. You know, this is that big sand yep. island we marked. We're gonna have a southeast wind, right? Right now it's southwest. So the wind should be coming this way. Almost wonder if you had this all packed full of decoys, but we should go check and make sure we can hide in there. Make sure it's thick enough to hide us. It's encouraging to see all these ducks, man. Yeah. There's so many. I expected to see like a lot of ducks this afternoon because we saw them in here this morning. We saw 50, 100, not a thousand. That was a lot of ducks. Yeah, there's no way they'd see you in here. Sitting on a bucket down in this. I don't know, we saw so many ducks in here in, in all this flooded stuff. I think you just have to at least try it. 
No, I mean, there's a lot of ducks here. It's just, you never know. Like there were so many spots coming in. Like this is where like me not having a clue, like I can't tell right. you why one spot would be better than the other. Mm -hmm. It's like, would that corner be better? Is this the right corner? I mean, there's been so many ducks, so. Yeah. It's where they seem to want to be. This is kind of that like dreamy habitat. This is the stuff guys dream of finding where you have grass and willows and like frags or rushes like kind of flooded up with water like this. The morning is supposed to bring light winds and temperatures reaching the mid fifties, hardly ideal for November. While I'm happy with our scout, I can't help but be skeptical about the morning given the conditions. Nice, you're clear. You ready, Jason? Yep. This lake is full of islands and dead ends, so navigating is anything but easy. When you're driving, it's harrowing seeing nothing but black off the bow, but that is exactly what you want to see. Grass means shallow water. I have to admit, I respect Jason's calm manner and trust in my experience. That looks familiar. You made it. All right, let's set a bunch of decoys. Yeah, I'll follow you. You just tell me what to do because I don't have a clue what's going on here. <laughs> <laughs> when we scouted, a lot of ducks were up in the flooded grass. I want our setup to reflect that. We're on the X, so I'm not worried about visibility as much as I'm worried about looking natural. We spread about seven dozen duck decoys out through the grass and then add another dozen goose decoys out in the open water. A jerk rig ran in the middle for some splashing is a must as there is not a breath of wind. We have like the most natural setup and spread I've probably ever like ran. Put together. Yeah. Hunting in this thick of like brush, this thick of a hide, no spinning wing decoys, jerk rig. Oh, there's one. Oh. Get ready, Jason. <laughs> Get ready to shoot him. Ah, that jerk swung wide on us. Hit that again. Hit that again. Right out front, Jason. Kill those. Kill him. Kill him. Kill him. Nice shot. No. <laughs> Get on him. There's one. Jason, you just doubled on widget. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe that. Double on your first two ducks. <laughs> it probably beginner. It's never gonna happen again after, <laughs> like that again. But oh. finally got something. Yeah, that's like a classic Washington duck. Anyway, good ones for your first two. <laughs> you didn't want to start off with like a mallard or anything. <laughs> no, like that, no. no, I love widgeon. Jason is an elk and deer expert, not a duck guy but he picked this duck thing up faster than I expected. He was spotting ducks that I wasn't seeing. Six out in front of us. Here they come, here they, here, here they come. Now they're in our Oh, right here, shoot them, oh my goodness. Identifying ducks on the wing, which is anything but easy. Must have been a teal, I think it was going 90. And I hate to say it, he even beat me to the punch a few times. Shoot it, shoot it, shoot it. Nice shot. Drake Pintail. Nice. Mr. Phelps with a Drake Pintail. I think that Pintail is going to mark the start of the big duck flight, Jason. Perfect. Perfect. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> you've, you've slow played me, though, into having two ducks left when the green the green heads start just uh -huh. flooding in here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're sitting pretty. you got a string of eaters going, that's for sure. Out front. Ah, 
I wasn't sure what everything else was. I know what I shot was a Drake Widgeon. <laughs> nice. That was a beautiful flock, man. I don't know. It's like a very hard statement to say it's my favorite duck, but I sure like them. Keep hitting that. Keep hitting that. Now, I have had a lot of mighty fine duck hunts in the middle of the day, but today was not one of them. We sat for most of the day plucking the ducks we had in hand, waiting on the waves of mallards we'd flushed out of here the previous afternoon, but they just never showed. Part of me thought these ducks might have migrated out, but the other part thought it was just the warm weather. The next morning was calling for rain and snow, we had lost our opportunity to scout, and I just don't know if we have a better option than this spot here. Well, Mr. Phelps, I think we gotta call it. Yeah. We got a lot of decoys to pick up. We do. This is usually when I sprain my ankle and gotta wait till the boat picks me up on the shore. <laughs> <laughs> We woke up in the morning to a steady rain and much colder temperatures. While I prefer sunny, windy days, a little weather is good to get these birds back on the move. That is, if they're still here. All is good about a mile into our boat ride, but then the motor dies. Uh-oh. What? I don't know, man. We got problems. And I'm not going to say who, but somebody didn't plan ahead and put a paddle in the boat. Luckily, there's a case shotgun and a marsh seat. Something's going on and it's not good. Are we in a good enough spot in our lives to say, like, sing row, row, row your boat? <laughs> it's been a few years since I've had to use my shotgun as a boat paddle. <laughs> this, you think this is where the term dead on the water came from? <laughs> this is definitely where the term dead on the water came from. <laughs> This is the last time you catch me without an oar in my boat. As we paddle our way back, I'm reminiscing, albeit bitterly, on all the times I've been through this before. But it's just inevitable that gear is going to break and not many demand more from their equipment than a duck hunter. Here, take this for a minute, just to get us turned. While it's frustrating to not be listening to the early wings whistling over the spread, you just have to laugh and take it. This is being a duck hunter. Made it. What do you do? Good day of duck hunting ruined. That's all right. We'll I can tell out. by my experience that today is gonna to be like a good greenhead day. Yeah, days like today are like what guys consider a ducky day, you know? I mean, I love sun and wind personally, but you got like fog and rain and chance of snow. It's what everybody always wants. But we're dead on the water. Dead ducks on the water. We find the boat motor is anything but an easy fix, so I call up my friend Trevor Austin. We had planned to meet up and do some goose hunting, but it looks like that is going to happen a lot sooner than we planned. But before we go scout geese with Trevor, we need to gut and bag our birds from the first day. Probably a little faster game processing than elk. Yeah, a little. <laughs> what would you say, I mean, how long would you say it usually takes you to break down an elk? Probably from the time we start to finish, you know, decent ground, hour and 15. Oh, that's not bad. You count the plucking of ducks, ducks can be about as time consuming. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So don't hold back. What was your honest thoughts on it? On what? Like duck hunting as a, as a whole. Oh, it's a blast. I, if, I mean, it's not all about pulling the trigger. You get pull the trigger a lot though, which is a plus. Yeah. And it's cool. I mean, watching the birds work and any animal you can call to and get to react at certain times is just... You're down yeah, with it? Yeah, I'm yeah, cool with it. Me too. I, I, I can get into it. I agree with you though, like, I'm a fan of anything that involves tricking them, calling them yeah. in, right? Yeah. Makes it that much more special for me. We need to get these things done so we can go scout. Yeah. Scout some geese. You have hunted geese before though, right? I have. Yeah. I have. Super 
expert at geese with my, <laughs> with my one day hunt. <laughs> Trevor Austin is another Washington guy that turned his passion of game calling into a business. Trevor is the co-owner of Pacific Game Calls, and we've been friends for years since we met at a waterfowl trade show. Trevor and I both knew this afternoon scout was going to be a tough one with the morning rain. See, in these long drizzles, geese typically stay in the fields eating the whole time it rains. Full and content, they often end up not even coming out for the afternoon feed. They're not bugling. I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> yeah, should I just start calling? What do you call them, a, honk, a location honk? A location honk? Yeah, 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 the greeting call. Yeah. yeah. I haven't seen anything, nothing from the lake. Uh -uh. Are you sure you saw two groups flying? Yeah. <laughs> now here's where you really see a difference between Jason's coastal elk hunting and waterfowl. Us waterfowlers are listening to music and eating snacks while he's usually hiking miles and miles to hear that one bugle. And even though scouting geese isn't physically demanding, I promise, trying to find a feed before sundown can be just as stressful as looking for a bull. Uh, as you can see, we didn't see a goose fly this <laughs> afternoon, so Dude, there's no, geese. there's not a single goose flying. I think the other spot's gonna be, be good. But I don't see that as bad for the morning at all. I see that no. as good for the morning. Oh yeah, they're gonna. I don't think they're gonna sleep in or do anything dumb. So it should be. It'll be nice and clear as well, so they shouldn't have to be held down. And I hate going on. I hate going after an afternoon scout. Like I don't. It's not my favorite, anyways. I don't trust them. They get lazy. Yeah. Is that what they do with elk too? They no. just get elk. Oh, no. no. <laughs> same trail, yeah, huh? They're not lazy. So like... you just gotta sit there on the side of the mountain. They just walk by the same spot every yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, this goose hunting easy. stuff's easy. Oh, goose where, hunting's yeah, easy. Yeah, where they go to the same field day after day, like these elk. Oh yeah, 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 totally. Rome. Yo, yeah. that's right. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. I know they have these weird highways in the sky that have to go right here yeah. every time. Uh, I got this um, goose hunting thing figured I out. I know, yeah. Finally, oh, sure. it's yeah. good. It's good. Our plan is to hunt a field that Trevor had seen birds in yesterday morning, but not last night during our scout. While I'm convinced the rain was the reason for the lack of birds last night, for all we know, their pattern could have changed and we won't see a thing. One of the things with doubling blinds like this is in the dark, you'll think you have it all piled up, you know, looks good. And when it gets light out, you're like, oh, I should have added another 15 minutes worth of corn to it, you know? <laughs> oh, mine's gonna look really good. Oh, is it? I'm yeah. excited to see how your fort turns out. It's like a contest. <laughs> it's a corn test. <laughs> Holy cow, it's a lot of stuffers. A stuffer decoy spread is exactly what it sounds like, a spread of stuffed or taxidermied birds. Instead of that smooth plastic look, you get the realism of natural feathers. That's a real advantage on mornings like this where frost can really give away plastic decoys. The downside of them is you have to baby them, and you shouldn't hunt them in the rain or wet conditions. So I've got kind of a 40 yard front line, a 20 yard side line, and we'll just make it a rectangle circle. We finish setting the spread right at sunrise and the first flocks start moving. Oh, baby. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. The geese had us beat right from the start. In my opinion, frost is a field hunter's worst nightmare. Not only does it make the decoys look unnatural, but it coats the ground in shiny white. Man, it's frost. Which we then put non-frosted layout blinds on top of, making the blinds obvious. We were the unfrosted mini weeds sitting at the top of a bowl full of frosted. Either way, these birds were picking us out like nobody's business, and we couldn't do a dang thing about it. Come on, get over here. Get over here. There we go, there we go. Dude, they just want to spin that far right. The frost was bad enough, but then the farmer came into the field running the plow, which in turn made the geese start to feed across the road in a different cornfield. By the time the frost burned off, the other feed was just too big to compete with. Just another run of bad luck. It's just like a crowd. Everyone goes towards a crowd, right? Yeah. 
Damn. They got us. They got us hard right now. After the morning's hunt, Trevor made a few calls to landowners and got permission for the afternoon on that field across the road. Hopefully, they fly in the afternoon like they did this morning. <laughs> hey, everyone loaded? Yep. Are they behind us? Yeah. You can look up a little bit. They're not committed yet. There's two groups. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, here we go. I'm gonna kill him on this. Go! On this nice. nice, no gun yeah. show, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh my God, you killed a goose. <laughs> my first shot was horrible. Trevor, that was fantastic call. Man, those man. worked like a son of a gun. They are killable. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that right there. Whew. That was some hard Washington birds right there. <laughs> to let them keep working like that Work. that many times. Work. They never once had a clue. Not a clue. No, that was the beauty of it. Heck yeah. Sick. All right. Here. I did the classic screw up, man. Come up, corn socks on my gun. Perfect, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I did the classic miss really bad on the first one. I swear bat. I'd never done it before. Oh my God, that felt good. One flock was all it took to make our day, and one flock was all we were going to get. At least we got one flock out of that deal. Yeah, yeah. it was fun watching all the things work and work and work. And shooting geese in December. More than anything for me, the, the thing I like, I guess maybe for me is so darn fun about waterfowl hunting is we, all we did all day was crack jokes. Oh yeah. Have a good time the whole time. Yeah, you don't have to be quiet the whole time. If I, I would have lost my mind 10 times over sitting in a tree stand. <laughs> <laughs> Just staring at your buddy. <laughs> yeah, no, it's always a good time when you can have buddies out here and shooting. That's what's fun about waterfowl hunting, get a group of dudes out. You know, I've dreamed, I've mentioned this to you before, but I've dreamed of coming out here and like hunting this area for a long time. And you saw it. I saw, <laughs> I saw it. It got the best of me, but it makes me want to come back even worse. I oh, mean, yeah. Redemption. Now I really want to like figure it out. You're just going to run into things that are beyond your control. It's true of life as a whole, but man, does it feel like it happens the most on a waterfowl trip. I used to get real bent out of shape about it, cursing Lady Luck for the missed opportunities and the troubles. And while those moments still get the best of me sometimes, I've learned to appreciate the stories I have from them. I'll always remember the first time I hunted with my buddies Jason and Trevor. Not just for the fun and the laughs we had, but for the number of curveballs waterfowling threw our way. <laughs>